All right, welcome back. Let's look at this first example of a type of Riemann sum that we haven't seen yet, the midpoint. Uh, now, a lot of people, when they see that phrase, Riemann sum, uh, they start to panic and they're like, oh my gosh, this is so hard to do. It really doesn't have to be if, as long as you follow what we're gonna do here. Because if you just follow the process, uh, you, you can still get an answer. Even if you don't fully understand what it is that you're doing, you still have a process to follow. Okay, so use our midpoint Riemann sum to approximate the area, da 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 da. So part A, uh, y equals root x from zero to one with two sub intervals. So again, we're gonna make the rectangles of equal width. So if I'm going from zero to one, I'm splitting it right here. So each of those rectangles has a width of a half but it's a midpoint, so I want the height to be right, to be generated right in the middle. So this is right here has gotta be the height of the first rectangle because it's in the middle. So then I can draw my rectangle like that. So then for the second one, this guy that's in the middle between one half and one. So this is the rectangle, or this is the height of that rectangle. Whoops, and I totally missed and blew it, but well. <clears throat> okay, so it's, this is going all the way up to here and, and across. So I just have to find the area of each of these rectangles and it still approximates the curve because you have a little bit extra out here, but then there's stuff that's not covered in uh, in here. Uh, so it still is gonna be pretty, pretty close. So let's get the areas going. So your area is gonna equal base times height again. And they both have a, a base of a half or a width of a half. So I can pull that out to the front and just do the heights. So plug in the x value that's generating the height. So plug in the half into your function. So square root of a fourth plus, then plug in the three fourths into the function. And then just start working it out. So square root that, so it's a half, plus root three over two Distribute the half in there, so a fourth plus root three over four, and you can leave it like this, or if you really, really wanted to, because some people do, you can combine it into one fraction. All right, so that's how you do that. So it's not that hard, um, as long as you know that you're plugging in the middle value and not the ones on the left or the right. Okay, so let's try it with this one. Uh, it's a parabola uh, from 0 to 4 with 4 sub intervals. So 0 to 4, so each of these rectangles is going to have a base of 1. Uh, so again, I want my height though to be coming in the middle because it's a midpoint Riemann sum. So, what's, so on the first rectangle, what's in between 0 and 1? Well, that would be a half. So a half is what is generating the height. So it's a little tiny rectangle right there. Okay, and then between one and two, it's three over two. So that's gonna be the height of my rectangle there. And then the next one would be five over two. And then the last one in between three and four is seven over, seven over two. So now I just need to get the area of each one of those. So again, each base is a width of a half. So I'm gonna factor that out to the front 
and then just do the heights. So I got to take one half, plug it into the function. So if I do, I'm going to get a total of two. Plug in the next x value to give me the second height. So three over two, I'm going to plug that into the function and I'm going to get 10. Next, plug in the five halves and we end up with 26. And then finally, plug in the seven halves to give you 50. <clears throat> oh, whoops, and I think I made a mistake, yes. The base, it's not a half, the base is one. Because it's the, the whole, whole base, not just from the sides and the middle. All right, I was wondering why that was off. Okay, so just add all those up, multiply by one, and we get a grand total of 88. All right, so they started working with this, and they were like, hey, you know, I can have my rectangles, um, you know, hitting the, the top. I could hit them the left or the right. You know, I can make them a different width, but it's still an approximation. So what would happen to our approximation if we use more rectangles? So if I s smash like six rectangles in here instead of four, or eight, or 20, or 50, well, it's gonna make it more accurate because there would be less excess and more covered on the inside. So if the width of the rectangle shrinks to zero, some functions will have all Riemann sums converge or reach the same value. This limiting value, if it exists, is defined as the definite integral. So we have indefinite integrals, and now we're looking at a definite. So before we look at the formal definition, we need to discuss some notation first, of course. We are taking a region under a curve and breaking it, breaking it up or partitioning into rectangles. So we took this region and broke it up into different sections. So the width of the largest rectangle is also called the norm and is denoted as this like double-sided absolute value of that delta. And remember the delta stood for the partition. All right, in the next video, uh, we'll go ahead and look at the formal definition and then see how to use it.